Hi, this is Mr. Goma, and in this video, we're going to talk about converting between moles of one substance and moles of another in a chemical reaction. We're going to build on what we did last week, where for a single substance, we converted between grams of that substance and moles of that substance. Here, we want to say, in a chemical reaction, we've got at least two different substances, and we want to know if we start out with a certain number of moles of one substance, how many moles of another could we get? So let's talk about how to do that. And we'll use this chemical reaction here to start out. So let's read this balance equation out loud in words. So what we have are two molecules of water reacting to produce two molecules of H2 gas, that's hydrogen gas, and one molecule of O2 gas, oxygen gas. So we can focus on the water and the oxygen. If we do that there, two molecules of H2O produce how many molecules of O2? Well, it's one molecule of O2. What I'd like to do next is just focus on the relationships between the H2O molecules and the O2 molecules. So notice we have a two to one relationship. So two molecules of H2O produces one molecule of O2. So suppose we ask this question here, two dozen molecules of H2O form how many dozen molecules of O2? Well, clearly two to one ratio, it's gotta be one dozen, all right? So chemists often don't use dozen, though, to talk about molecules and atoms because molecules are so tiny, we need a super big number. What's that super big number? Well, of course, it's the mole. So we could also ask ourselves, two moles of H2O produces how many moles of O2? And what we'll see, of course, is it's one mole of O2. Same relationship, same ratio, as if it was just molecules or dozens of molecules. Let's take a different reaction. 2NH3 plus 3I2 form N2I6 plus 3H2. Two moles of NH3 produces how many moles of H2? Well, now we know we can just use that ratio there. It's going to be three moles of H2. So what we can take away from here are a couple things. The ratio of the coefficients to each other in a chemical reaction, and specifically in a balanced equation, are both the molecule to molecule ratio and the mole to mole ratio. It's going to be the same thing. And because it's the same thing in their proportions, we can make these into conversion factors. So let's go back to the last equation we did and see an example from there. Okay, so again, we have 2NH3 plus 3I2 form N2I6 plus 3H2. Can we make a mole to mole ratio? Well, sure we can for NH3 to H2. Yeah, well, look at, let's look at the coefficients. Well, we have 2NH3 over three moles of H2. So two moles of NH3 is forming three moles of H2. That's one way we could set that up because it's equivalent. And then the other way we could set that up is three moles of H2 over two moles of NH3. And notice, of course, they're just flipped. So just like within the gram to mole conversions, we can flip our conversion factors. We can do the same thing with these mole to mole ratios. So this is really useful because now we can use it to solve problems. So let's go to our first example here. Oh, actually, before we go to our example, let's go to our steps. So first, we're going to write the given number in unit. Notice that's going to be the first thing you do pretty much always. You're going to write what the problem gives you. And here, the unit is just both going to be moles, and importantly, it's going to be the substance. So if you're starting out with moles of H2O, it's important to write moles of H2O. If you're starting out with moles of N2, write moles of N2. All right, number two. Determine the mole to mole ratio based on the balanced equation coefficients. And three, set up your conversion factor. What do we want? Well, on top is the unit you want, the substance you want, and on the bottom is the substance you need to cancel out. Of course, then you can do your math. All right, so now let's do an example. How many moles of H2 are produced from 0 0.25 moles of NH3? Well, first thing, of course, we've got to start out writing our given with, um, uh, with the unit. So here we have 0 0.25 moles of NH3. Now for the rest of it, of course, you need the balanced equation, which is why the balanced equation I put here at the bottom of the screen. If you don't have the balanced equation, you can't solve these problems here. All right, so 0 0.25 moles of NH3. Next, we need the mole to mole ratio. Notice we want moles of H2 and we want to get rid of moles of NH3. Moles of NH3 is what we're starting with. So on the top of the conversion factor, has to be the mole to mole ratio with H2 on top. And then the bottom has to be NH3 on the bottom. 
So notice, we're just getting these numbers here, the three for the moles of H2 and the two for the moles of NH3 straight from the chemical reaction, okay? Let's see, did we set this up correctly? We know if we set this up correctly, if we can cancel out the unit we started with, and indeed we can. Moles of NH3 on the top, moles of NH3 on the bottom, those cancel out, we're left with moles of H2. So how do we type this into the calculator? Well, you always put your given first. So 0 0.25 times three, because that's on top, divided by two, because that's in the denominator. And we multiply that out. Oh, don't forget your unit, moles of H2 now. Multiply that out, we're gonna get 0 0.38 moles of H2. That's the two significant figures. Last thing before we do some practice problems. Suppose we're given this problem here. How many moles of Cl2 are produced from five moles of AlCl3? And we're given the equation from which we can solve this problem. So what do you need to do first before you solve this? I'll give you a second to think about it. Well, one thing that you may notice is that we do not have a balanced equation. We've got three chlorines in the AlCl3 in the reactant side, but only two chlorines on the product side of the equation. So this problem isn't balanced. This would essentially be saying three atoms of chlorine produce two atoms of chlorine. That doesn't work. So in order to make sure that we get the right mole to mole ratio, we have to balance our equation first. So make sure you double check that your equations are balanced before you figure out mole to mole ratios. Of course, if we were to balance this equation, we get something like this. 2AlCl3 forms 2Al plus 3Cl2. Notice six chlorines on both sides, or six moles of chlorine on both sides. Another way to think about it. All right, so hope this video helps and good luck with your practice problems.